I have with me Dee Nash, who is a faithful friend of Rant and wonderful blogger. She blogs at Red Dirt Ramblings, and she's also a garden writer. For this episode, we have a special guest, Kathy Purdy, famous for her blog, Cold Climate Gardening. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Elizabeth. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for, thanks for coming on Garden Rant Cocktail Hour with me. Thanks. Well, it's, you know, much more fun to be out here having a cocktail than inside dealing with people who want me to do their laundry for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm having um, Darjeeling tea, and I'm doing it in my tea metal teapot. These are from Poland, and I figured since it was afternoon, we should have, you know, I could have some Darjeeling. And it's English. I am a big tea drinker. I drink it every day. Well, I'm having um, I'm having sparkling um, rosé champagne, but it's made in um, New York State. It's uh, Doctor. It's uh, some of our some of our readers will know. It's um, Doctor Frank, who was one of the first winemakers to establish a winery. In New York State, working with vinifera traditional um, European grapes. Uh, I'm gonna be drinking diet raspberry soda. I know, so boring. But look at raspberry. <laughs> uh, I'll probably be going back out to garden when we're done with this. So, um, I didn't want to get too intoxicated. Some of us garden while well intoxicated. Some of us intoxicate after gardening going to a party later and i'm bringing um a special cocktail sort of as my contribution so it's kind of involved so don't fall asleep while i'm telling you all the ingredients for this cocktail they requested it oh. it's called um gnomes water you start with um it's a gin based cocktail oh so you start with um about a shot and a half of Hendrix gin. And then you use cucumber juice, which I made. Oh. And That's so it's, it's very that. botanical. And um, I'm just going to put like half. And I just ground them up in the food processor and then strained it. You know, you've probably made cucumber juice or no. Can't think of any reason to. <laughs> and then lavender syrup. So I made simple syrup with sugar and water, and then I steeped some lavender, actually leaves, because that's all I have. But they have just as much um, essence, it seems to me. Okay, so there's that. And then there's a little lime juice, and then you top it with... Pellegrino, or any kind of sparkling club soda, I guess, like that. And I guess the syrup is what will give it the sweetness to make it palatable. And the lime juice might help, too. I don't know what cucumber juice tastes like. So... There you go. And then you, um, I'm going to bring along some garnishes, and I've done this before on this. Um, I have some of these winter pansies that I've been making fun of. <laughs> but they're pretty. So I made like a little lime garnish. Right. So there you go. There, it's a drink. And the drink is called a jelly bean teeny. Oops, I didn't mean to dig. So we start off with our vodka. Now, this is not scientific. This is not a chem lab. We just throw in some vodka. Then we get, vodka is the best base for a drink. I think. I think it's wonderful. Makes everything taste good. Then we throw in some Chambord. Now I had to open the bottle earlier because the lid tends to get stuck because it's kind of a sweet, sticky stuff. And then it calls for cranberry juice. But I have cranberry pomegranate here. 
because this is what I drink for health reasons, of course. So what you have here is a very good health drink. This is not a drink just to relax with. It's a drink for your health. How cold did it get last night where you are? Uh, I don't think it got below 40. It was I don't. 26 here. How? 26. Oh my God. Yes, we had a freeze. Wow. Yeah. I don't even know that I've had a frost yet. Yeah, well, I hadn't either. <laughs> it got cold last night. <laughs> So I want to get back to this whole frost discussion. I mean, I don't know what else you wanted to talk about, but we've not really had a frost yet. We just hmm. haven't had one. This it's, is three we've had now. I, I mean, I have, I mean, I go outside and all my elephant ear that I've left out there to perish, um, the ones that I'm <laughs> abandoning, uh, they're still alive. I mean, I haven't watched, some of them are drooping because some of the things like there's a, What's the, the abutilon? Is that a pet? Oh, okay. No, it's a pepper plant. I wasn't sure if you're going to pick up one of the squirrels or what, because I know that oh, your garden is called I squirrel. I don't pick them up. <laughs> them stick. But you can plant them in the oh. fall? Uh-huh, you can plant them all the way through October here. Oh, okay, and yeah, I'm, it, it would be too coffee. late. Yes, yeah. it would, because to be getting ready to snow. So, no, it isn't. I can't see <laughs> we I'm just be, kidding. Is she, I, when you plant in a cold climate, it says right in the David Austin book, you're supposed to plant with the... Um, where it's rooted, why am I not thinking the technical term for that? Where they, the bud graft. Yes, it's supposed to be four inches below the ground. Well, you've already got roots that are like, you know, 12 inches long. It's a deep hole you're digging. Bought some new um, tree peonies. I got Guardian of the Monastery, which is a, it's a light sort of lavender pink. And it has these gorgeous pink stripes in the middle of it. And they radiate out from the center. Of course, most of them have that yellow center. Very, very, very beautiful. And I think that one of the great things about um, tree peonies, there's a couple of things. They're um, they're not as quite as hardy, I'm told, as the herbaceous ones because they can go all the way to the ground, you know. But I think the tree peonies are much more beautiful. There's the sculpture. I haven't got it all totally set up yet, but that's close. Um, the welding marks will fade, but those are on the bottom, that's like on the skirt, that's supposed to look like um, the tree trunk, because she's turning into an oak tree. I could get closer, but I don't want to trip. The squirrels have been digging up my new paving stones on the walk. <sighs> yes, if they can dig it, they will little creeps. Right there is my fuchsia that has to go inside. See, that's the problem is I haven't finished repotting everything that's got to go in. I need to buy more potting soil, dump out the old stuff. What do people, what do you do with the old potting soil? I reuse it. I don't care what's in there. <laughs> okay. I tried to sterilize mine last year and set it in I did a post on that and everyone, I got lots of responses over, you know, the, 30, 40 responses, and almost everyone said they just reused their potting soil. It's been lovely talking to you, though. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Okay. So, salute. So, cheers. Till next time. <laughs>